This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 222. Ring the Alarm, Off Limits, The Enemy of Success by Roger Lawson of rogelawfitness.com and I'm Dr. Neil. Welcome back to Optimal Health Daily or welcome for the first time if you're new here. This is the podcast where I act as your very own personal narrator and I read to you from some of the most popular health and fitness blogs online, including Nerd Fitness, Ben Greenfield Fitness, Steve Pavlina, who I narrated yesterday, and many more. As a reminder, if there are any authors that you read from but would like narrated for you, come by and let us know. You can get in touch with us on our Facebook group. The shortcut link to that is oldpodcast.com slash Facebook. Once again, I want to thank Brian Copeland and his producer, Carolyn, for having me on their show yesterday. It was a blast. Thank you as always. And very soon, I'll be playing a recording of that show here on this podcast as well. But don't forget to show Brian some support by looking up his podcast, The Brian Copeland Show, in the podcast app of your choice. So yesterday on The Brian Copeland Show was Motivation Monday. Today here on this show, it'll be Inspirational Quote Tuesday. So here we go. Quote, prepare to be wrong. Chip and Dan Heath. Okay, that doesn't sound very inspiring, I know. But today's topic will touch on this. So with that, let's hear another post from Roger Lawson as we optimize your life. Ring the Alarm, Off Limits, The Enemy of Success by Roger Lawson of rogelawfitness.com. Is it just me or is it hot in here? Last week, my homeboy JC set the internet ablaze with his article addressing the concept of clean eating touching on why it should be buried and added to the list of words never to be uttered again, right next to bling and he who must not be named. I, for one, couldn't be happier to grab a shovel and start digging. Why so serious? All it takes is one look in the comments section of JC's post to come to the conclusion that people are highly protective of their food choices and, when they are threatened, are likely to resort to verbal diarrhea in its defense. Take, for instance, this gem from the comment section. Quote, I tried to read your article with an open mind, but as the author of a clean eating recipe blog and somebody who's been eating clean for over three years now, I have to strongly disagree with you on just about every level. You also state, food is neither clean nor unclean, but merely energy my body needs to function and survive. Not true. The body processes different foods very differently. The more refined and processed a food is, the worse it is for your body. The body processes refined foods very quickly and dumps the glucose into the bloodstream. The pancreas then has to kick into overdrive to make up for the excess. Do this often enough and you may end up with diabetes, end quote. The inaccurate claims made here are an entirely separate issue, but if nothing else, it highlights one important fact. This person didn't read the article at all. The fitness and health industry is home to some of the internet's finest alarmists. In one camp, you have those who swear that carbs, especially when consumed mere moments after the moon rises, will magically don attire and invite all the neighborhood fat into your body for a night on the town. They often worship at the altar of fat. If carbs are the problem, then unlimited amounts of fat are the solution. Then, of course, you have those who place the blame of the globe's ever-expanding waistline on the consumption of fat. These folks are responsible for more egg yolk homicides than Humpty Dumpty, and they are often more than likely to push an elderly lady into oncoming traffic if she even offers them a bite of her cheeseburger. These are only a few examples of the many camps and factions running amok today, but they all represent reductionist thinking, which is at best unproductive, and at worst, misleading, and acts as a roadblock on the path to objectivity. Nevertheless, when debate sparks and one's ideology is challenged, unsubstantiated statements and straw men arguments are without a doubt lurking nearby. Their baby is under attack and it is their duty to defend her with all the zeal they can muster. And if that means cherry picking scientific research or downright creating facts out of thin air in order to back up their viewpoints, then so be it. Emotional content. In the above quote, the commenter barely made it past the headline of the article before diving headfirst into an emotional response due to thinking that their way of eating was under attack, when that couldn't be further from the truth. Do you see a problem with this trend? I'll admit that when you feel justified in doing so, it's hard to not respond emotionally to particular topics, and it's something all of us have done at one time or another. But here's the thing. You don't have to give in to your emotions when responding. Take a step back, breathe in, 
Breathe out. Woosa. Come back after you've had your time to reflect on the merits of the argument and can respond in turn. That is the power of the interwebs. You can be as cool, calm, and collected as you want to be or fly off at the mouth making false claims only to end up looking like a supreme muffin. The choice is yours and yours alone. Pitfalls of extremism. The worst part about maintaining an extreme point of view is that, in most cases, you're hurting yourself the most. Taking such a stance ensures that you are often so far to either side that no sort of middle ground can be seen from your vantage point, and there is no room left for the possibility of learning something that may change your mind for the better. You're shut off. Your thoughts have been crystallized, and that's that. Excuse me, are you saying something? Nuh-uh, you can't tell me nothing. If that road is one we'd like to leave less traveled, what is the alternative? Clean eating, the problem. The best way to level up your knowledge game is to become a student of life again, realizing that what you know now isn't all there is to know, and that within every interaction is the opportunity to learn more. Lee Peel wrote a fantastic article on the subject of cheat meals and how the way we're approaching them is fundamentally wrong, and I couldn't agree more. By setting yourself up to cheat, you are operating under the false assumption that what you're about to eat is wrong and that you shouldn't be having it. As I expanded on in a previous post, by placing certain foods into a different category than those you normally eat, you're putting them on a pedestal, which increases the likelihood that you're craving said foods because of the simple fact that you told yourself that you shouldn't be eating them. Clean eating, the solution. Objectivity, common sense, and moderation should act as your guideposts. This was the entire point of JC's original article, but many people seem to have abandoned ship before getting far enough into the piece to recognize this fact. Realize that no foods are off limits whatsoever, and that having the body that you desire and living the life that you want don't have to be at odds with one another. Make sure that you get adequate protein, some omega-3 fatty acids, lots of veggies, some fruit, and fill the rest of your caloric allotment with what is commonly referred to as discretionary calories which can come from apple pie to zucchini and everything else in between. The human body is a beautiful piece of adaptable hardware, so make sure to experiment and find what is best for you, because in the end, that is all that matters. As long as you are moving towards your goals, let your results speak for you and leave the worrying to those who are awesome at it. I'd like to leave you with a quote from Lyle McDonald's research review in which he tackles this very subject. Quote, given caloric control, the body's response to a given set of nutrients, with the exception of blood lipids, would appear to be more determined by the total caloric and macro content of that meal more than the source of the food. In terms of hormonal response, clean versus unclean just doesn't matter. It's all about calories and macros. End quote. What are your favorite, quote, off-limit foods that make people stare in awe when they see them disappear into your mouth? You just listened to the post titled, Ring the Alarm, Off Limits, The Enemy of Success by Roger Lawson of rogelawfitness.com. We learn more every day about how nutrition affects the body. We are nowhere close to knowing everything. But what I can say is that I agree with Roger when he says when we put foods on a pedestal, we're gonna tend to want them more. They're gonna become more desirable all of a sudden. And so if those quote-unquote cheat foods are those foods that we're putting on a pedestal, then yes, I agree we're gonna want to consume them more. A trick that psychologists like to use to help us realize this fact is by having patients close their eyes while they go through this exercise. Now, if you're driving, please don't do this along with me. But if you're in a place where it's safe to close your eyes, go ahead and try this with me. All right, eyes closed, provided it's safe. Here we go. Don't think of blue elephants. Don't think about blue elephants. Stop thinking about blue elephants. Blue elephants, blue elephants with their blue ears and the blue tail and their blue skin. Stop thinking about blue elephants, blue elephants. Blue elephants, you can just see them. Blue elephants, but stop thinking about them. Blue elephants, blue elephants, blue elephants. Okay, open your eyes. Were you able to stop thinking about blue elephants? For some of you, you're gonna be yelling at me saying, if you had just stopped saying that for a second, yes, I probably would have. But because you kept saying it, I couldn't stop thinking about it. When you think about food, for example, isn't that the exact same process? You close your eyes and say, don't think about that cake, don't think about that donut, don't think about that pizza, french fries, and on and on and on. But what's happening? You're now focused on it. Your brain's already thinking about it. And because you're hyper-focused on it, you're gonna be more likely 
to consume those foods. So it really goes back to what I always say. Enjoy things in moderation. Now don't forget, if you want to suggest authors or get in contact with us for any reason, you can visit oldpodcast.com. But we also have a Facebook group where it's even easier to get in contact. The shortcut link is oldpodcast.com slash Facebook. Or you can search for Optimal Living Daily Podcasts and request to join from there. We also give away books in the Facebook group. We also share pictures and more. So all the more reason to join. Again, the shortcut link that'll take you straight to it is oldpodcast.com slash Facebook. Have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday. Hope you're having a great week so far. Thank you as always for listening. Thank you as always for joining the Facebook group. I'll see you on tomorrow's show where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift, as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us, and remember, your optimal life awaits.